All right, hello everybody, welcome back. And today we have some news coming from EA in regards to Battlefield 5 and the whole like hashtag not my Battlefield uh, debacle. And uh, we have developers once again antagonizing their audience. <laughs> which is, in my opinion, just my my honest opinion here, it's just not a very good business practice. But anyway, if you guys are real gamers, real gamers, just like me, you probably know about the Battlefield 5 debacle. And if you've been playing games and paying attention for the last month, you know that November had two big games that actually flopped. And uh, the two big games are Fallout 76 and Battlefield 5. <laughs> So, for the past few weeks, uh, people have been comparing Bethesda to EA because both are in this weird situation where people who traditionally loved their games have turned around and said, hold on, let me stop you right there, I don't think that's it, chief. And in my opinion, it's kind of sad to see Bethesda lower themselves to EA's level. Like, I think we can all pretty much agree that everything that EA touches is just turned to dust. Microtransaction riddled dust, right? So hopefully in the coming months, we'll see Bethesda actually regain their reputation and that goodwill. But anyway, in regards to the Battlefield 5, if you guys are familiar with the Battlefield 5 franchise, you know that there's a lot of... Um, gamers out there there's a lot of players who really love world war ii sort of like environments and battles and a lot of these people who are also part of the battlefield audience really have fond memories of the older battlefields right and these are the type of people that you know they see a tank and just by the shape of the tank alone they can tell whether or not this tank is italian russian it's an ally tank whatever they can tell you the names of the freaking planes they know the names of the guns and they know the most important events battles and sort of like strategies that happened in world war ii these people are really invested in that sort of thing so conceptually battlefield has always been kind of like accurate i know there's a lot of gifs out there of people doing crazy things in battlefield Granted, that's not accurate, but the context of it is and the story is sort of like realistic for the most part. So traditionally, Battlefield has always appealed to this audience. So when Battlefield 5 came out and decided to go with a completely different marketing and a completely different direction, it comes as no surprise that these people, the, the their core audience, sort of like had a negative reaction to it. In the same way that the core audience for Diablo had a bad reaction to um, the mobile game and it's not necessarily because you know the audience doesn't want a mobile diablo game no it's because it was marketed one way and then presented in another way the same thing happens here so the biggest change there was the women if you guys are familiar with the controversy uh they added women to the battlefield and to the vanguard and uh to be fair we do know that there's a lot of women who contributed greatly to the war and uh, there's there's a reason why everyone in that era is called the greatest generation because everyone was either fighting or working to ensure that people had ammunition and fuel and all the things that they needed so there's a lot of women who participated uh in the war whether or not they were in the battlefield right but the difference here is that it's not so much that they added women to it is the way they did it and the tone with which they engaged in the conversation right if you guys notice there's no outcry because there's women in call of duty 4 because the reality is that no one cares that's the reality the, the problem is when the publisher and the developer adopt this finger wagging lecturing tone against their own audience and then you have someone at the top in those companies come out and say you know if you don't like this game is because you're sexist or ignorant it's like dude 
when you're saying that you're casting a judgment over a group of people you know and the battlefield 5 audience is freaking huge my dude so there's people from every walk of life from, from any background you want and uh, i'm sure there's a subgroup there a very small group who's actually sexist and don't want to see women in video games for whatever reason which is um, in my opinion i don't share that opinion it's dumb but the great majority of people there were actually mad about your attitude towards them the lecturing tone the sort of like patronizing lecturing finger wagging tone that you had there that a lot of people categorize as virtue signaling you know you don't want to see these things from companies and i subscribe to the idea that video games are to escape you know you shouldn't have to talk about um these political issues when you're talking about video games but for some reason companies continue to push an agenda so the audience reacts to that you know so this scene right here is the one that um didn't sit well with the community right and if you notice there's a lot of things happening in this scene you have a freaking robotic arm uh you have viking war paint and then you have a cricket bat with some i, I don't know spikes right there and it's a woman in the middle of the vanguard uh and uh i don't know some some german town so you know there's a lot of things happening there and of course if your game is traditionally more down to earth than i don't know call of duty for instance your your audience is gonna have a a strong reaction to that especially if you try to appeal to an audience that is very into accurate world war ii scenarios and then you change the tune and you add something like this they're gonna have a bad reaction to it so i think it's expected and then you have on top of all this you have um, people who are not really familiar with marketing and pr come out and say that uh, you know if you don't like this game is because you're sexist these are people from the actual company from dice and from ea patrick sutherland said you know don't buy the game i don't care So that's not the way to address your audience, my dude. If you say something like that to an audience that's already triggered, they're going to oblige, dude. And of course, the results are out there for everyone to see. Um, I think Battlefield 5 sales are 67% down compared to Battlefield 1, which is not very good. This is obviously retail sales. So again, we have the same conversation that we had with Bethesda and Fallout 76. Yes, most people are moving towards digital, but it can't. It doesn't exhaust the number. It's not enough to explain the 67% drop. So it's undeniable that this is a result of terrible PR and business practices from EA and from DICE. Let alone, let's just put that all controversy aside. There's a whole different issue with the way the game is designed. There's a lot of parts missing from the game. I think the game is not complete yet. There are certain like customization options that are not available. I think I saw an angry review from Angry Joe recently and he said that one fourth of the game is not available because uh, the story mode is not complete yet so there's a lot of technical and design aspects that are also hindering the game but i think obviously the controversy and the outrage is definitely a big factor that has to be taken into account and uh, anyway the problem here is that if you antagonize your customers they're not gonna buy your game <laughs> it seems like something that is uh, logical to think but whatever anyway when battlefield 5 was released a lot of hardcore gamers a lot of uh, sort of like the core audience decided to start a hashtag called not my battlefield uh, which is it's a easy way to just show your disapproval for a game or for a company and uh, a lot of people were respectful but granted there were some people just leaving nasty comments that you don't really want to see i mean if you're someone who's trying to make a point and say look I don't like the gameplay in this game. I don't like your um, direction. I don't like your concept for this game. We're gonna have to change this and hopefully we'll, we'll do something different in the future for the next Battlefield installment. If you're trying to take that sort of like logical, respectful position, you don't wanna be mixed with the guy that's saying, oh, oh woman, oh my God, I don't wanna see woman in my video games. Uh, oh, Femi Nazis, whatever. You don't wanna be mixed with those people, right? And that is exactly what uh, DICE decided to do. They decided to mix the people who were very disrespectful and kind of like sexist 
with the people who were just making a point about, you know what, we just want an accurate game. So of course, um, sales were down. Uh, like I think the pre-orders were below expectation is how they described it. And um, now we thought this was all done and over, you know? We thought, all right, there was a controversy. The game came out, it did poorly. Let's move on, right? Well, not quite, because for some reason, DICE decided to just stoke the fire once again, um, because there was some sort of like end of the year party or some sort of like celebration at DICE. If you guys are not aware, DICE is a Swedish developer. It's the developer house behind uh, Battlefield 5. And um, the COO or GM, the CEO, GM, I don't know, one of these business titles that people use, one of those guys was doing a presentation on the Battlefield 5 reaction and they decided to just cherry pick the comments from the um, um, not my battlefield hashtag that made made people look made their audience look as if they're just a bunch of toxic players you know and they just disregarded the comments that were perfectly logical and were making a good argument no they just decided to cherry pick the ones that they um, knew were gonna cause some sort of like reaction from the crowd you know and someone at dies some hidden developer there decided to leak the picture and uh, holy crap we wouldn't have noticed if not for this guy and uh, of course the internet was set ablaze once again because uh, they decided to do this and once again it seems like they haven't learned their lesson you shouldn't shouldn't try to antagonize your audience a portion of your audience you have such a big audience that a portion of your audience is not gonna adjust to your political views and you should always try to keep that away from your games you know there are games that do this well like red dead redemption 2 they do this very well you know you walk around you see you see a feminist trying to you know push towards um rights for women in the game and it doesn't it doesn't feel intrusive it doesn't feel as if they're trying to push an agenda you just see the nature of things in the game how things actually were at the time in Red Dead Redemption, but this definitely feels as if they're trying to make a point here, a political point. And that's what people don't like because um, again, from my perspective, and I think a lot of gamers do uh, subscribe to this perspective, video games are, are a way to escape reality. They are entertainment and we, for the most part, don't want this sort of like on your face lecturing attitude in regards to whatever it is that you want to push towards. I don't care whatever it is. But anyway, I think at this point, my suggestion, if I may, my advice to EA and DICE would be just let it go, dude. You had your objective, you know, you antagonized your audience and you lost. It's over, man. Just let it go. If you still want to create a game with a female lead and a female character as the main protagonist, find a story that is honest, you know? Don't do it from a place that is kind of like lecturing the audience as to what you think is the correct way to think. Just find an honest story from an honest writer and do that. And I, I assure you, your gamers, your, your, your audience will react to it because honest stories just have this resonance with people. So you can see it with a lot of games that have female leads that have done amazing. So anyway, let's just stop right there. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you guys did, remember to leave a like, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.